This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The last of the Apollos, the spaceships which took men to the moon, has returned from her last voyage. With astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand aboard, the spacecraft splashed down in the Pacific after an historic Soviet-American meeting in space. Morton Dean reports. It wasn't just the Apollo spacecraft coming down, it was the curtain, the last Apollo mission. And it ended with the degree of precision that has marked most U.S. space performances. Right on time and just about right on target. Plopping into the Pacific, 320 miles west of Pearl Harbor, and within sight of the main recovery ship, the USS New Orleans. The spacecraft did tip upside down on impact. No major problem, and soon it was righted. Helicopters were overhead, swimmers dropped into the water almost as soon as the Apollo itself splashed in. Even when the seas are calm, as they were today, this for the astronauts is often the worst part of the round trip to space. All that bobbing around, it's a great spaceship, but a lousy boat, that's how one astronaut once described it. With its stabilizing balloons looking like giant ears, the Apollo looked something like a giant Mickey Mouse doll. From inside the capsule, word that the three astronauts were feeling okay, were glad to be back. Soon the carrier was alongside, lines attached to the capsule, and with the astronauts still in it, it was lifted onto the deck. Astronaut Stafford, Brand, and Slayton looking bright and chipper after nine days in space. They did wobble a bit. Takes time getting used to gravity after being in a cramped and weightless environment for so long a time. Greeting the astronauts by phone, President Ford. On behalf of your fellow Americans, about 214 million of them, congratulations and thanks for a very successful and extremely productive flight in space. We're delighted to have you back safely and we're very, very proud of the great job that you did. Your safe return uh, marks the close of the Apollo program and you and all of the rest who have been participants should be extremely proud of its success from the beginning to the present. No more ceremonies or splashdowns such as this for the foreseeable future. Next American in space won't go for at least another four years. And when that happens, it'll happen in a new type of spaceship, one that looks and lands something like a jet plane. Morton Dean, CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. The used cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov came down three days ago, and today in Moscow they met with Western reporters, and Leonov said the joint flight was, in his words, as smooth as peeled eggs. Equipment here. Two cosmonauts in a Russian spaceship riding their rocket toward a rendezvous. three astronauts in a U.S. spaceship on their way to join them. From CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Roger Mudd in the CBS Newsroom in New York. Good evening. Five spacemen are orbiting the Earth tonight, heading toward that Soviet-American meeting in space. Two countdowns, 10,000 miles apart, sent the Soviet Soyuz and the American Apollo flawlessly into orbit for their historic rendezvous on Thursday and two days of working together in space. The Russians got the joint mission off to a perfect start and for the first time let the world and their own people watch. Cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov, both space veterans, appeared relaxed and ready as they put on their space suits and went to their waiting Soyuz. The Soviet openness for this international venture extended even to their new mission control center at Moscow. And the TV scene from there was not unlike that shown so often from Houston. The Soyuz got off precisely as scheduled at 8.20 a.m. Eastern time, and here's how Soviet control described it with Houston translating. The plane hours, 20 minutes, 10 seconds. The flight is proceeding normally. The program maneuver of the booster rocket has been given. 20 minutes into flight. The flight is normal. The engine is operating in a stable manner. 
President Ford himself emphasized the international implications, the detente of this mission. He invited Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin to watch the Soyuz launch with him on a large screen in the State Department Auditorium. The president said he'd sent all five spacemen a message saying they are blazing a brand new trail of international space cooperation. Never before have representatives of two countries lived and worked together in space. They have a wonderful and unique opportunity as a result. This space mission also demonstrates that the United States and the Soviet Union are prepared to cooperate in a common endeavor of great significance, importance, and complexity. Here at the Kennedy Space Center, the American astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand were asleep when Soyuz went up. They awoke about two hours later and watched a videotape of the event as they ate the traditional pre-launch breakfast of steak and eggs. They sent the cosmonauts congratulations on a great launch and then prepared for their own. Like the cosmonauts seven and a half hours earlier, the astronauts entered their spacecraft about three hours ahead of launch time. This last scheduled U.S. space shot for four or five years attracted the usual thousands of watchers to the central Florida coast, and among them were hundreds and hundreds of invited guests. Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin gave further emphasis to the detente of the mission when after watching the Soyuz launch with President Ford in Washington, he flew here to watch Apollo go up. About 10 minutes after liftoff, Apollo went into orbit and began a two-day chase of Soyuz through the skies to run. Right now, the mission's going well. Both spacecraft are in their orbits and no serious trouble reported. This is Mordecai Guide, CBS News from the Kennedy Space Center.